My name's Brooklyn, I'm with Block Party Quilt Co. and let me show you my favorite pattern for Halloween. This is our Witch's Feet Table Runner. One of the best things about this is that there's no paper piecing, no applique, it's super easy, and it comes in a pre-cut kit. Now our kits are awesome because everything you need is pre-cut. We have all of the front pieces, your bindings in here, and your backing, and of course the pattern. So. If you have purchased one of these kits or just the pattern, because some of us do have fabric at home, I know how that is, then you will be able to see the video that goes through in depth on how we put the boot block together. But for this video, I'm just gonna show you how we made it into a pillow. So I took one of these blocks and turned it into this awesome little pillowcase. And now I can have this on my table as well as on my couch. So follow along and I'll show you how to do the spiderweb quilting and making the pillowcase. If you have purchased the pattern, then you get access to the video where I show you how to make this from start to finish. Well, I mean, I guess we're finishing it now, but I show you how to make this piece and even um, down to the dimensions, how we're gonna split, split this up. If you haven't purchased the pattern, consider this an invitation to do so. And we're gonna make this into the funnest pillow ever. So I am gonna attempt spider web quilting. So on our table runner, I quilted this on our long arm, which um, we do offer that as a service. And if you want it to look perfect, that's the way to go. But honestly, this project is so small that I think it's just gonna be easier to do on my domestic machine. I am not very experienced in quilting on my domestic machine. This is the first time I'm gonna try something that's not just straight lines. So let's see how this goes. When you're making a pillow, this is like totally extra. Like this is not necessary at all to quilt it, but if you're a quilter, it kind of feels like it's necessary. So I have my piece of batting that's a scrap, which is why I was kind of stretching it to make sure that it goes to the ends. If you have a bigger piece, cut it to just slightly bigger than your piece here. Otherwise, it is gonna be like maybe a little weird in the seam when you sew it together, but this is close enough that I feel comfortable working with it. Once you have your batting placed, we are gonna pin this. And unlike a quilt, we normally have a backing on this, but the backing needs to be open so that it hits the pillow. You could also do it where the backing, like you have a small piece of white fabric or something in there just to give it a little bit easier time quilting or just if that's familiar, then that might be easier for you. Since this is just a pillow and I'm not concerned about that, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And I am trying to keep my pins when I remember. I wanna pin the pointy side down in the fabric so I don't get stabbed when I'm focused on the other parts of this. Okay, now we have that done. Now I'm gonna do my spider web. So I've been debating if I wanna do one spider web or two, but I think for simplicity's sake, we're gonna just stick with one spider web. I am gonna center my spider web right here where this pink pin is. First, I'm gonna measure to make sure that that's the true center. This ruler is only 18 inches, but it's gonna be able to give me the middle. So my thing is 19 inches. That means that nine and a half is where I'm gonna go. Okay, perfect, wow, I was good at guessing. That's impressive. I'm gonna move this pin just while I'm making my lines because I don't want to run over it. I think it's gonna look kind of funky if I have it straight up and down. So this first one, we're gonna make it slanted. And this is a friction pen. I love friction pens. I know there's debate out there on whether they should be used for quilting or not. My opinion is they're awesome. We do sell those on our website. The link is posted in the description too. Right here, I am lining up my line on this so that I have two perfectly perpendicular lines here. They're gonna cross at the right angle so that I make sure my spacing is gonna look good as I go around. The line's definitely hard to see on the black. In fact, some might say impossible, but that's all right. I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm pretty confident that I can sew a straight line from here to here where I will see the line. Then after you've made your two perfectly perpendicular lines, most quilting rulers have 45 degree angles like built in. So I have one right here. I'm gonna use that to go to my center mark. 
And then instead of measuring again from there, I know I can just line it up with that line and come down here. Then we'll do the same thing with the 45 degree angle on this line. So I'm lining up this line with the first one that I drew here, and then I get the correct angle in between. Now I'm coming back to this first line that I drew, and on this line, I'm gonna make marks every inch and a half to tell me where to put my next lines. You can do it more dense than this if you prefer, but I'm gonna just stick with inch and a half. So here I have it right at the center mark, and we're coming up an inch and a half, doing that all the way up this line. Then I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing. Now this gives me a target of what to hit with my lines. You can do this on every line that you've done, but I'm just gonna do this one and the second one that I laid down. That is pretty black, and even though I can get a straight line there, I cannot see my mark. So I'm gonna add these pins as my target marks here. And this is gonna make a little more sense when I show you the next step for why we're adding all of these little marks. Okay, now I am ready to quilt. I have opted for a dark color thread. It's a pretty dark charcoal, and I want to do that because it's gonna blend in on my boots and on the shoes, well, on the boots and socks, but it's gonna really stand out against the background fabric, so I'm excited to do this. First, I am gonna sew on all of these lines except for that first one that I made. So I'm just gonna quilt down all of these. I am using a walking foot, and I think that helps immensely when you're quilting because instead of dragging the fabric like a standard foot, it picks up on it. You won't get bunches, and it looks a little cleaner overall. Look, we did our first line. I'm so excited. So I did get a little bubbly over here in the middle, but when I'm doing my other lines, I'm just going to try to make sure that I cross over the same spot. So I will quilt all of these and I'll meet you back here. So remember when I said I wasn't gonna mark all of these lines? Well, I changed my mind. So I went back and marked all of these lines at an inch and a half, mostly because that's just gonna make it easier for me to connect these lines over here. And now that I've done these three lines, I'm gonna come back to my original one and we're gonna start up here at the first mark and do just a little back stitch so that our seam is set and then come down here and quilt the rest of that line. Okay guys, I am not gonna lie. I'm pleasantly surprised with how well I was able to hit that center mark. It'll show up a little better when I've ironed off these lines, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna trim this thread and this is where we're going to start doing the connections. If you are getting lost in the boots with like where the lines are and everything else, it might be easier for you to come around to the back and work here. So you can mark your lines across this back. But I'm gonna work from the front. I'm, I'm feeling up for a little challenge today. So again, like I said, we're gonna start right here. And you can see that this stitch, well, maybe you can't see it because it's on the gray and that makes it a little hard. This stitch starts right above that tick mark for that line, which is perfect. So I'm gonna start here and I am just gonna work my way around the circle across all of the little tick marks then when I get back to this point, I can take my stitch and just go up the line and then keep working around. I am going to try to incorporate a little bit of a dip in between, like spider webs are, but I don't know, I might find that that's a little tricky, so we might end up with just some circles, but it's still gonna look awesome. Okay, I am seriously loving how this is looking. It's definitely done by hand, but it's so cute. So I'm gonna keep going around. The second round is a little more intimidating because it's a wider gap in between. Okay, so you might be able to see this. And it's kind of hard with the line, but I did add a little bit of a back stitch. So I, when I was sewing this line from here to here, I sewed past the tick mark and then about three stitches of a back stitch. And I'm thinking that that's gonna help me come back and make this look like a straight line. And I don't want gaps between my web here, this line. I want it to look 
I mean, for lack of a better word, seamless. Yeah, that's always a funny word to use when quilting because there's a lot of seams in quilting. Anyways, so when I get back to this tick mark, I'm hoping that I'll be able to hit that line a little bit easier than trying to match where this triangle would have been. So let's see if that works the way that I'm hoping it will. And like I said, this is really my first time trying this. I haven't practiced this kind of quilting on anything else. So we're learning together. If you have any tips, like if you see something really obvious that I could try to make it better, please comment so that we can all help each other make some beautiful things. Now when you get to this last row here, things get a little interesting because I'm out of tick marks down here, but I still have several more on the sides. So let's look at this. So down here, I'm done. Over here, I definitely have more and it really needs it or else it's gonna look very unfinished. I am just gonna come over here and start at the edge and just kind of work my way in looking at this same distance down here. You could draw a line this way so you know where to start or you could just be like me and just do it by guessing. I'm going to come over here and again I run out of marks right here but I will still have a gap so I'm going to make a line from an inch and a half away over here and add another little loop until I am out of space. The main thing is that you just want it to look consistent across the whole piece and doing these off into the edge even though they don't connect anywhere else it's going to make it look consistent. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm just gonna come down here. It looks like I'll only need about two more pieces to complete this. Okay, so not bad. It looks pretty good actually and it looks pretty natural to the shape of this spider web. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the rest of the corners. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my gosh, I am so happy with how this quilting looks. I'm gonna just trim off some of these extra threads because we have a lot of them. Then I'll show you how it looks once we iron it too. The ironing is gonna be what gets rid of the blue friction pen lines. Oh my goodness, the more I look at this, the more I love it. And I'm honestly really proud that I did this by myself without the help of a long arm machine. So I'm definitely way more comfortable on the long arm. You can see the difference is, I mean, it's pretty obvious that this is like way more spiky. I love how I connected the webs on here. But for this project, this turned out pretty good. So like I said on the full tutorial of this, you need to have a piece for your pillow that's one inch bigger than the insert on all sides. And that's to account for a half inch seam allowance. If you want a bigger seam allowance when you're attaching the back piece of your pillow, make your whole piece a little bit bigger. I'm gonna move to showing you how we are gonna attach this back piece. So I have this really fun purple witch fabric. This is from Riley Blake. It's called Spooky Schoolhouse is the line. And I think it looks perfect with the purple boots. To make the backing, of the pillowcase, you need to have two pieces. If you're fancy and you want to put a zipper in, then you can just take this, sew it together, and add a zipper in one of the sides. I don't love working with zippers, and I am going to show you how to do it without. So this is just like an envelope method. So the first thing we need is two pieces that are 19 inches wide. Now you have your first piece that is cut to 19 inches wide. This is gonna be the top part of my pillowcase back. And I am gonna cut it to half of the size of the pillow. So instead of the 19 inches here, because I'm not doing the full piece, cutting it to half would put me at right about 10 inches. And I'm going over half because I want to have a little hem here. So half plus a little bit is what you need. Then we'll take this piece off to the side. And then we also need a piece that is 19 inches and two thirds the length of the back. So where this one was half, it was at 10. I'm gonna do my other one at 13 inches. So I'll cut it to 19 and then to 13. 
Now these two pieces are gonna be my overlapping envelope back. It really doesn't matter which one is over on the top. I like the look of having it, the piece that is half of the size going over the top of the back because it has this nice little piece in the middle, but it really doesn't matter. So whatever your preference is, is a good choice. I'm gonna fold this over about a half an inch and then I'm gonna press. So I'm making a mark here with a pin, just so I know which one's which, that that piece is gonna be pressed here and this one is gonna be pressed here. Now that you have your edge hemmed, I am just gonna do a little stitch down that to hold the hem in place. And I'll do the same thing with this piece. Okay, now I have both of my pieces are hemmed and ready, and that doesn't look super straight, but that's okay. And we are gonna overlap like this so that I can open my pillowcase and put my pillow inside. So we'll take our main piece here. This is the front of the pillow that we made. We have our cute little spider web. It's almost a shame to cover it up, but it'll be better to cover it and see all of the fun work we did here. Now you sew this with right sides together. And I have my bottom piece here and my top piece here with the hems, these hemmed edges going towards the middle. So you are gonna have this overlap and you need that for your pillowcase to work out. So once you have that lined up, pin it in place. I'll start here. So you have your pieces here and you are gonna sew around this edge with a half inch seam allowance and make sure to catch all of your layers on these spots where you're sewing over right here. This is the top edge of one of the back pieces. Hit that with a couple back stitches so that we have that secure and then do the same thing with this. So when you're sewing around, make sure that these parts are the most secure sewn together so that you won't rip it when you're putting your pillowcase on. And you probably wouldn't rip it anyways because we aren't really very aggressive when we're putting pillowcases on, but that will just make it more secure. And then once that piece is sewn, we're gonna flip it right side out. First, I'm gonna check if I caught all of my edges and everything looks nice and clean, so that's always fun. I'm just sticking my fingers in the corners to make sure that the corners are fluffed out properly and they don't get tucked in. Oops, looked like I meant to sew with this one on top, but that's okay. They both get the job done, and honestly, it's the back of the pillow. No one ever sees it. So let's do the big reveal where we actually stuff this around the pillow insert. Oh my gosh, the way this fabric looks is so fun. It's like very old timey, quilty, then it's a little witch hats. And for the final reveal, ta-da! Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I cannot wait to put this on my couch.